Hello, I'm Stefan Graeber. I'm the project leader for LexD. And today I'm going to be taking a look at using LexD from a Windows machine. First thing, LexD itself can't run on Windows. The, the server side of LexD is designed to run on Linux, only runs on Linux. But the what we can run on Windows is the LexD client tool. That client tool can work on Linux, Windows, and Mac OS. And that lets you run LexD on the Linux system of your choice, whether it's a physical machine you might have around, a virtual machine on, on running on your Windows system, or a cloud instance. In this case, I went with a another machine on the network, in this case, an Intel NUC. And we're going to be setting up Windows to interact with LexD running on it. So the first thing that's going to be needed on the Windows side is installing the LexD client. The easiest way to do that is by using Chocolatey, which is a third party package manager for Windows. Once that's installed, uh, all you really need to do is get a command prompt running as an administrator. Then go in there and just do chocolate install LXC and vert viewer. The vert viewer part of this um, is used to access the graphical output of virtual machines running on LexD. So if you don't intend to ever use virtual machines, or you don't intend to use their VGA output, then you don't need that. But if you do, install that viewer and things will just work. Now on the Intel NUC side of things, uh, this has Ubuntu 20.04 installed on it, which comes pre-installed with LexD 4.07. I'm going to be switching that over to LexD, the current um, feature release, which is LexD 418, mostly out of habit. Um, what I'm going to be showing today here would work perfectly fine directly uh, with the 407, but I'm used to having the latest feature release. So I'm just going to be updating to that. Now on Windows, the packages have been installed, so I can close the administrative command prompt and just get a normal Windows terminal. From there, if you run LXC version, it's going to show LexD 4.18 uh, on the client side and nothing on the server side because we don't have one. Now that LexD on the Intel NUC is installed running 4.18, um, you're going to need to figure out what's the name of your physical network interface by running IP link. In this case, it's EN01. And knowing that, you can then run LexD init to configure LexD. Takes a little while because generating a certificate first and then the, the tool itself uh, starts asking questions. There we go. So no clustering. Uh, want to set up a storage pool using the default. So that's going to be ZFS with a loopback Z pool of 30 gigs. So that's all good. Not connecting to Mars. Not going to be creating a local network bridge. Instead, we want to connect uh, LexD directly to the physical network. That makes it easier to run things like web servers and those kind of services inside those instances and have that be accessible to anything on the network, including in this case, our Windows system. So I'm saying no to that. Then it's asking whether uh, you'd want to use an existing bridge or host interface. In this case, it's a yes. And then asks for that name from earlier, EN01. Next question is asking whether we want LexD to be available over the network. And the answer to that is yes. Um, Listening on all addresses is fine. Default port is fine. Then you've got to pick a password. And the remaining two questions can just keep the default. And that's it. LexD is now installed and configured on that Intel NUC. You can run a Lexi list to just show it's working fine. But now the more important part, connecting to it from Windows. So for that, we're going to need the IP address of that Linux system. And then add it to Windows by using LXC remote add, give it a name, in this case call it snuck02, and then enter the address. This shows the fingerprint. If you want to validate it, you can get it from LXC info on the Linux side of things. See, it's the same, see it's all good, and then enter the password from earlier, and now it's been added. That will show it inside the list of LXC remotes, and 
to make things easier, we're gonna be switching the command line tool to dealing with that particular remote for all further operations using LX remote switch. That done, it, now if you run LXC version, it's gonna show 418 for both local and server, which was is talking to a server, and LXC list is showing nothing running currently. First thing I'm gonna be spawning is a basic Ubuntu 20.04 container, let's call it U1. And that's just gonna take a few seconds to download and unpack the image and then gets us a container that's gonna have an address that's reachable in the network. Now I'm packing that image and just about done. All right, give it a couple of seconds to pull up and look at what we have. So we do have a container called U1. It's got an IP4 address that is reachable from the network, in this case, from the Windows machine. And you can interact with it exactly the same way you'd from, you would from a Linux machine with LXC exec to get a shell inside it, for example, um, or using all of the other commands. And now for something a bit more exciting, let's try a virtual machine. And not any virtual machine, let's use one of the desktop ones. So let's do Ubuntu 21.10, so that's the development release and the desktop variant of that image. Let's call it V1, it's a virtual machine and it's to bump the CPU and the memory a tiny bit because it's a desktop VM. So four CPU cores, four um, gigs of memory. And let that run. So it's not only the image, it's gonna be unpacking it and creating it. The desktop images are quite large. I believe this particular image is about 1.2 gigs. Uh, so it's gonna take a little while to download and create from it. So you can create, just start another terminal and can keep interacting with LexD. Um, I said that container is directly connected to the physical network. So it's getting uh, both IPv4 and IPv6 address directly from the physical network. Um, all normal interactions work fine. So you can even do things like pulling a file from that container. Let's say you want to download HC hosts. That's downloaded and open it in Notepad. There you go. Um, all of the normal LexD commands work perfectly normally, so you can you know, create, a, create a snapshot um, that will show up in the list now as a snapshot here. You can also interact with the LexD server itself, so doing you know, network list that shows our physical network card that it's used by three things right now. Uh, the storage will show the ZFS pool, the ZFS pool that was created earlier and you get you can even get uh, server information of LXC info or look at the uh, the hardware present on the server with inf the resources detail in this case that's going to be showing us um, the uh, network interfaces gpu and everything that's in the in the machine you're talking to with LXC remote uh, you can also add you know, as many different legacies as you want. So you could be talking to a LexD running in a VM on the Windows machine, as well as talking to LexD running on a Raspberry Pi on your network and to LexD running in a cloud instance in the cloud and do all of that from just one, one CLI tool from your desktop of choice. Let's just look at how far we got. Okay, so the, the image got downloaded and is now un being unpacked then it will start and it gets to uh, to try and get a VGA console from it and, and interact with it. Yeah, it's still in the packing. So this is this is quite neat uh, and the exact same thing can work. Uh, so the, the CLI tool works on all Linux distros. It also works on, on Mac OS and I believe you can also use and manage it the exact same way uh, from FreeBSD as well. So there's and all the normal commands are all there. Uh, you can look at the images that have been downloaded so far. So the two images, both the container and the virtual machine image. The only thing that's a bit different, I guess, from Windows is just the terminal emulator in Windows 
feels a bit weird occasionally. Uh, I guess uh, that, that was visible earlier during the download stage where the the redraw of the, the terminal makes it kind of flicker. Um, and there are a few things like ex escape sequences to hide passwords and that kind of stuff don't always work. That's why the, the, the password I used uh, when adding the remote LexD server was being shown. And there's other, other things like uh, simple scrolling doesn't work quite the same way. And if you look at the, go back on the Linux system, you'll see the exact same thing. And Lexi list is going to show you both of the instances and look at what's going on and see if top actually fits screen. Yeah, it does. So the currently the desktop image is, is being actively unpacked into a new a new volume and the container will be created from that. And because for images that are already loaded, uh, so in this case, the 2004 container image, creation works pretty quickly. Just need shifting and there we go. So we got a new one. Just keeping an eye on that win on that uh, virtual machine. As I said, in in there, if I install, what can I install? See Apache. Just installing basic web server. So say we install that inside that container, then we'll be able to reach it from the from the Windows system. So that can make it pretty convenient if you're you know on on Windows uh, and want to have like a number of different Linux systems to to deploy stuff to. Potentially with different operating systems, different releases, all of that kind of stuff, it can all work um, very easily that way without using any resources on the Windows system itself. So if you've got a not very powerful laptop without much memory or something, then that can work really well. Let's just look at the IP address again. So U1 was 172.17.16.246. Okay. There we go, talking to Apache running inside that container. It's also quite interesting because I, I mentioned earlier uh, using a Raspberry Pi, and that's another interesting thing that can be done where you can do your development on a Windows system or Linux or Mac OS or whatever, whatever you feel like, and then have a Raspberry Pi running on your network, running ARM, and being able to, to easily get containers, ARM32, ARM64 bit, or even ARM64 uh, virtual machines running on that Raspberry Pi and interacting with them as if they were effectively local, local containers, local things on your system. So that's one, uh, one as nice aspect of FlexD. And the virtual machine has finally started. So now I can do XC console v1 type VGA, and that will connect to the virtual machine console remotely. We see it, it's booting. And should be getting into a desktop shortly. Uh, sadly, the resolution is not ideal because uh, because of the limited resolution I'm running Windows at, and um, the virtual machine trying to run a bit something a bit wider. But there we go. Uh, so I'm just gonna close that and then change the display settings. Should be able to get a slightly lower resolution. That should work better. Uh, well, I mean, written by 600, that should do it. There we go. And there you have it. So that's a now a Ubuntu desktop virtual machine running on that Intel NAC and being accessed and managed from a Windows system. So I'm hoping this was um, useful to you that this might be a setup that can that can work for, for quite a few people. Um, like some people actually like using this, uh, Windows as their primary desktop and then use Linux virtual machines or servers to do their development on. So they can, that's a great fit, great fit for this kind of use case. Um, and for some others that don't necessarily want to use um, Windows as their primary desktop, but have to for work, 
then that might be another way to easily manage um, remote uh, remote LXD is running in either virtual machines on the same system or somewhere on your network and being able to, to easily interact with all of those Linux systems. Thanks for watching. I was just, hope that was really useful to you. Um, feel free to leave comments down in down beneath the video. Um, and if you have any, any more co uh, complex questions or would like instructions, go on our community forum uh, where we have a number of posts around running containers with all machines and people ready, ha ready to help you there. Thanks.